So I think we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining. I know you all have busy, busy schedules. And also thank you for your patience as we allowed a few more to join um, and start a couple minutes late. So appreciate that. Um, we wanna make this as interactive as we possibly can um, in these new days of everything online. So um, if you have any questions, please drop those into the, the chat function. We'll stop periodically along the way and address those questions. Want to let you know there are no crazy questions. Um, this may be brand new to some of you, so please ask anything or if you have comments, um, please drop those in as well. Um, then just one last thing, we wanted to make sure that you knew a copy of this presentation. We tried to make this um, as much of a takeaway with steps in it as we could. Um, so that's available for you to download in the handout. So we encourage you to do that so you have a, a go back to document, if you will. We will do a live demo at the end. We had a few questions from our previous one for site managers if there was going to be any kind of a, a video that you could watch. So what we're doing is doing a live demo so that you could refer back to this recording um, to see those steps again um, live. So with that, just again, wanna welcome you. This is AccuPlacer uh, Proctor Training for those of you in Idaho. And we just want to start with a few introductions. My name is Kathy Montanisi. I work with um, those of you in Idaho that use the AccuPlacer program to support you. I'm joined by my colleague, Deb Anderson. And then also I'll turn it over to um, SDE if they'd like to introduce themselves as well. I'll go ahead and introduce myself. This is Randy Cole. I'm a secondary um, transition coordinator for the State Department of Ed. Um, so if you have any specific questions on IEP um, issues, you can go ahead and ask those or even email me later after the presentation. Thank you. And this is Aika. I'm the um, accountability coordinator. I'm coordinating college entrance exam. For the State Department. Thank you. And I think we had one more person, or was that everyone, Ayaka? We have Taylor. Sorry. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Taylor Haggerly. I'm the program specialist with the Assessment and Accountability Department, and I am your tech support today. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, thank you everyone for that. Uh, so today what we're going to talk about is, uh, we'll have, well, I'll start out by just sharing a couple brief updates um, from SDE. We'll, there, we're gonna dive into proctoring eligibility and responsibilities. Uh, we will talk about the different ways that you can administer AccuPlacer to your students. And then we wanna finish up with some student resources to make sure that you are aware of things and tools that you have to prepare your students before they sit to take the exams. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we really wanna make this as interactive as we can. So drop those questions in and I will stop periodically. Deb will be monitoring that chat for me um, and to see if you have any questions along the way. So before we jump into things that are all kind of specifically about AccuPlacer, we just wanted to give you a couple of reminders and updates. Uh, so please contact your school site manager to receive a Proctor account. So if you do not have a Proctor login, uh, the person you would reach out to would be the person that is responsible for your high school or district. Um, so they and they have they are the site they have site manager credentials and they are able to create that Proctor account for you. And then also please contact your school site manager to request test units. And test units are required folks to give the assessment. So a test unit is a measurement that we use per assessment. So if you have five students that are taking five tests, you would need five test units. Um, so you can kind of figure, use that to figure out um, how many test units to request. If you get that wrong, you don't request enough, you can ask for more. And if you over request, you can, you can send those back. So we don't want you to be too worried about um, getting that wrong. So let's start with talking first of all about proctoring eligibility and responsibilities to make sure that we are keeping the integrity of the AccuPlacer as intact as possible. 
So there are two different proctor roles that we have within the AccuPlacer platform, and we wanted to make sure that you knew the difference between them. Um, so when you're requesting, uh, you know exactly what you'll get if you are, become a proctor reporter or uh, what duties you have if you become a proctor. So a proctor reporter is able to administer tests, first of all. Um, they are also able to help with or assist with creating those test vouchers if you are testing large groups of students. They're able to edit student profiles. We know that there are students that when they are entering in their information, if you are not using the voucher system, they may get their, their first name, they might flip it with their first and their last name, they might get their birth date off by one number. Um, they make mistakes, right? So um, you are able to go in and make corrections. So I want you to know that once a, that is entered in for a student, a record, it doesn't, it, it is uh, changeable. Proctor reporters also have access to all of the companion materials within the platform. And companion folks are the accommodation formats or special formats. We have uh, regular print and large print within and the answer sheets within the platform that you can print on demand. And then you would have to order if you are looking for CDs or any braille versions. But access to either ordering or to actually printing those materials is available to a proctor reporter. And then a proctor reporter is also available to generate all site-specific reports for their individual test site. So whether that is pulling an individual score report, so records for one student, pulling bulk ISRs, or looking at the different types of form of uh, score rosters that we have um, to look at information in, in different formats. A proctor reporter is able to do all of that. A proctor then, just really kind of like the name indicates, their main function is to administer a test. So they are able to assist with creating those vouchers and they also can edit the profiles, but they cannot run any of the reports or access any of the accommodated formats. All user roles within the AccuPlacer platform or anyone who access the platform, um, they do need to be certified. And we have two different certification versions. One is more administrative, and that's for the institutional administrator, which in your case is SDE and for site managers. So that's one version. And then there's a second version that is specifically for proctor reporters and proctors. So if you are a site manager that's kind of a one person show, you will be required. So you're, you're serving in both roles, I should say. You will be required to take both of those certifications. Um, they are short, they're about 15 questions each, and we do provide training materials for those. But if you are one person who is uh, both site manager and a proctor reporter or proctor, you will need to take uh, two certification tests. How long will I have to complete the certification test? Uh, new users must complete the test before your credentials are fully activated. So the first time you receive your username and password, you go to accuplacer.org and you log in using those credentials. The only thing you will see is a link to the actual test and a link to the training materials. Once you successfully pass the, um, the test, then you will have full access um, to everything on the navigation panel that is allowed with a proctor reporter or for a proctor. And then how many times can I take the test? Testing is unlimited, it's open book, so you can have those training materials with you. Uh, we do require a score of 100% to pass uh, the certification exam. How long will the certification be good for? We got this question in the last session. It is 12 months. We do an annual renewal, folks, and that is because we are constantly adding new functionality to the platform, and we wanna make sure, and we're, we're utilizing the certification to make sure that you stay up to date on what those new features uh, look like and how to operate them. And then how do I take the test? Um, you will be able to take both certification tests through your account. It is self-proctored, so you don't have to have anyone proctor you. And no units, of course, are required to take the, the test. One thing that we just added that I think is a really nice feature is at the end of your certification, if you did not pass it, it will show you a printout of which questions you got correct and which ones you got incorrect. And that just really helps you with the retest. So proctor eligibility. Proctors must be responsible adults. 
Uh, they must be vetted and authorized by the institution to proctor exams. They have to go through the training and certification, which you're going through the training now, and then you'll do the certification. And every proctor or proctor reporter must have their own username and passwords. Um, we can't emphasize this enough. We, uh, we do not allow you to have a generic username and a generic password that is shared at an institution. Everyone must have their own username and password. And then proctors cannot administer acuplacer to members of their own household, um, immediate or extended family members or friends. And we know in some small communities, um, sometimes this, is, this can be a little bit of a challenge, but we really, um, really hold tight to this one that you cannot administer acuplacer to anyone that's a member of your household. Um, and then they cannot be engaged in any commercial test prep company. So then moving on to the proctor responsibilities, there really are two main ones to ensure proper test security before, during, and after testing, and then to safeguard against improper testing and cheating. We wanna make sure that we're doing the best for our students. So under that number one, um, they're really responsible for securing any and all printed test materials. So if you are working with the companion regular or large print booklets, if you print them out ahead of time, you must make sure that you keep them in a safe, uh, locked uh, uh, container so that you make sure that they're not available for others to see. Um, collect and monitor prohibited items before testing. So all cell phones, any uh, wearables really uh, should not be if you are doing in-person uh, administration. And then distribute, collect, and shred the scratch paper. And again, we know that now in these COVID times when there's more and more remote, distributing the scratch paper isn't always necessary um, but if you are doing remote testing we ask that the remote proctors um, watch the student um, tear up or rip up the scratch paper afterwards we just want to make sure that they're not writing down because they do right they're they're working on the problem so they write the problem down on scratch paper we want to make sure they're not taking that with them and then that is being destroyed and then under number two um, it's the responsibility of a proctor to check and verify the student's identity um, we know sometimes this seems a little strange, especially in smaller communities and you work with these students and you know them, but it's kind of to make sure that these students get in, um, they know that the um, importance of this exam and this is something that moving forward with standardized testing, they will be required to do. So we do require that for the Accuplacer exam as well. And then if you're doing in-person that the proctor is circulating that test center or the testing room during the test session, and then remain engaged at all times, avoid non-proctoring activities. We do have some recommendations for in-person testing or on-campus testing, I should say, that the computer workstations are five feet apart, uh, separated by sound and light, absorbing privacy dividers. This, folks, really is just a recommendation. We understand that that is not possible, but we have some test centers where it is. Um, but then this one, one proctor to every 15 to 20 students, if possible, is also a strong recommendation that we have. If you run into anything that you feel isn't correct, is it did not go as you thought it would, uh, please report that to your site manager at your high school, who will then will be responsible for reporting that to uh, SDE. Then again, student identification. We do require you to check those IDs. Um, we know, again, in some of the smaller schools and communities, you know these students, um, but we're still asking you to follow through um, with this step. This slide is just meant to give you all of the acceptable forms, um, what they should include. And if a student doesn't have a form of ID, we do have an official ID form that you can use in place of that. We wanted to make sure that you just had a list of some of the prohibited items. If you are doing on-campus testing, the number one, right, is cell phones, um, student-owned laptops, computers, or Chromebooks. We have made some exceptions now during COVID that if a student is at home and they need to use their parents' laptop or something that is not school issued, that is allowed during these times. Um, calculators are not allowed unless there's a prescribed accommodation for that. Calculators are um, built into the Accuplacer platform. So if a question appears and a calculator icon is there, then that student is allowed uh, to use that. If not, a calculator is not allowed. And of course, any dictionaries or reference materials are not allowed. And then the paper, again, we just wanna make sure that that's being destroyed after each test session.
some of the security features that we have built into the AccuPlacer platform is something we call the test session lockout. This allows for if a student, it's like a, uh, a lockdown browser um, to some degree, if a student clicks outside of the AccuPlacer window, they will get locked out and it will require the proctor to sign back in and to resume testing. So if you see that this happening, you know, over and over and over, especially after you've told them, you might want to really, really um, check that a little bit closer um, because it could be that they're trying to go out to grab a calculator or to look something up on the internet uh, to Google something. This function can be turned off if you are using screen readers and we have set up branching profiles that you would choose where we've turned that off for you. And then there's a, another function that's called the save and finish later. This pauses the student's testing session. So even though AccuPlacer is untimed, students can take as long as they need, we know that sometimes many might require um, completing it over a series of days, and that is allowed. So if a student would like to take the reading one day, come back the next day and take their math, that is totally um, allowed to do that. And you would just use the save and finish later. When that student comes back and you resume the test for them, they are on the same number that they left off on. However, it will be a different question will be presented to them so that they wouldn't be able to work on that question and come back. So if you're if you're pausing the test in the middle of a test, that's allowed, or you can pause it at the end once they've completed a section as well. Either one works. And so this screen is just showing you where that save and finish later um, is located. You would just, it's right underneath your name when you've logged in. You would just click on that little drop down arrow and then click the save and finish later and that will stop the exam. And then if you do run into anything, a test violation, we've just got some protocol in place, um, some steps um, that we're asking you would follow. We know that using your due diligence, um, your professional judgment, this doesn't happen, but if it does, we uh, we ask you to stop the test session, um, review the device if a device is involved in it. If you see they've taken a picture of a question or they're texting a, a friend or something like that, um, then I would consult with your with your site manager on whether or not that test session should be inactivated. There is the ability to inactivate a student's scores, but we want you to know that once you do that, you cannot get them back. So we want to make sure that you're you're really talking through whether or not that is the action that you want to take and then you only need to notify the college board if you feel like test content was compromised so it, so if they've taken a screenshot um they've texted it to to someone uh, that sort of thing if you would um, make sure that you send that to accuplacer at collegeboard.org don't take a screenshot um we we're asking you not to send any items through email because that's not a secure um, channel, um, but rather just explain um, what happened and give us as much information about the incident as you can. And we're able to look that up, what the actual item was on the back end and make a determination on whether or not that item needs to be retired based on the situation. So I'm going to pause here, Deb, and see if we've had any questions come in so far that we can address. Okay. Uh, first one is asking, uh, will the state provide those of us who do not currently have an account with logon credentials? So I'm going to turn that to to Ayaka. I I think there's a form they would fill out. Is that correct? Do I have that right? Yes. So there is a form for site managers, and site manager can set up proctor accounts. Perfect. So if you are a proctor, you would go to your site manager. If you're a site manager, you would fill out the form. Did I get that correct? Yes, thank you. And then please send me an email if you cannot find the link to the site manager request form and I'll send it to you. Perfect. Deb, were there any other ones? There are. Uh, someone had asked and they may not have seen, Danielle, you asked if paraprofessionals could be um, uh, in the test room assisting to any students taking the exam. Uh, one of the things that I saw Randy answer said that paraprofessionals could be proctors because someone had asked that question too so they're allowing paraprofessionals to be proctors kathy and but i think danielle may be asking well excuse me it's daniel uh may be asking uh if they can just be in the room if they're not a proctor and i if that's not how you're asking the question 
ask it again, please, Daniel. Yeah, and absolutely, you know, for check-in and, and that type of thing, anyone can. If you are actually involved in the test administration, then you would just have to make sure you complete the ACTA certification, but absolutely paraprofessionals are allowed. And they're asking if students can take both Accuplacer and the SAT or ACT. I don't know if that's a policy thing. That is a policy question. So, Ayaka, could you address that one? Yeah, that's a good question. We would we were thinking that this would be a choice for a child, either SAT or Accuplacer, and because that's the requirement that's um, listed in Idaho administrative rule that a child has to take Accuplacer, well, SAT or ACT, and if a child is has an IP, then that child can take an Accuplacer. Um, but that's a good question. I think I would need to discuss this with my supervisor to see what he thinks about it, but I'm, I think general direction is that a child either has to take SAT or Accuplacer. And Ayaka, uh, someone was asking for your emails, so you might post that for them. Um, it says, can a student who had, whose test has been deactivated due to a test incident, I, I, they may be talking about that inactivated that Kathy inactivated. talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are they allowed uh, to retake? And if they retake, would it use another unit? They, they would be allowed to retake. That would be a local decision um, that you would make. And But yes, it would require another unit. So based on the incident, the severity of the incident, that would be a local decision. Um, and then it would require another unit. So another consideration when you're thinking about inactivating. And then it said, is this the same test incident log as other, other state tests? And I don't know how, I mean, it's within our platform. So incident I don't know if you, log? Yeah, it there, said is, yeah, that's what they were asking, Kathy. There, there must be incident logs for other state assessments, I'm guessing. Okay, yeah. So Ayaka, I'm not sure if that's one you need to also check on or if you know the answer to that. So if they, if they do something, if they find some violation with Accuplacer, is there a log, a state log they also need to complete? It sounds like that might be the question. Could be, yeah. Yeah, I need to look into that. The The rule says participation, so I guess incomplete test would result in unparticipation. But um, I can look into this and get back to you guys. Okay, and we had told the, the last group um, that you'd be putting together an FAQ with some of these and getting that sent out. So perhaps the, they could all be together in one document, that might work. And we'll I think the ne next one's a policy question and it's the last question. Uh, I mean, I think you answered it, uh, Ayaka, about if this is the alternate to the SAT, is that right? Or is it an additional exam? This is an alternate to the SCT, that's correct. Okay. And that was it, Kathy. Very good. Okay, let's keep moving then with the next section, which is actually talking about test administration. I want to make sure we have time to get to that demo, Deb. Okay, so we've just presented for you again uh, as a takeaway. Uh, a test administration checklist, so things to do before test day and then after, or excuse me, on test day. Um, the only thing that I really want to point out on this is the verify systems check. We want to make sure that you are uh, aware of that, and I think we have a slide on that. Um, you, you would go to accuplacer.org. You can have your IT folks help with this. They don't have to have a login. Just go to accuplacer.org, and you see that box around the little check mark that says verify system requirements. When you click on that, it's going to tell you very quickly that device, if it has everything um, that you need to run Accuplacer uh, smoothly for that student. It gives you a report. It's instantaneously, you get it. And then you see the little arrow down there where it uh, says math test, math ML. We wanna make sure that you, uh, when you're running this check, that you click on those links um, because what it is, these are math questions, and we want to make sure that they're rendering properly. 
meaning that any graphs or pictures or anything are going to show. So there are three different um, questions to, to click on. If anything is missing out of that, that means that, that you don't have all of the math font loaded. And so we want to make sure that you really check that one. That seems to see that seems to be, excuse me, um, the, one of the biggest ones in high schools, making sure that machines have the correct math loaded and then also the pop-up blockers often that some firewalls can stop that so it's really important folks to run this verify systems check uh, to prevent things on test day um, that you can take care of ahead of time then we wanted to give you a visual of kind of the test experience for the student so the very first question that a student is going to receive is going to be pulled from our large pool of questions in the lower middle difficulty range if a student gets that question correct is or excuse me incorrect the next question gets a little bit easier if they get it correct it gets a little bit harder and it continues to adjust until it has covered all of the content that is included in the test specifications for that particular subject area. So what ends up happening is students really get a customized test. So everyone doesn't get, when you get it, when you take a linear test, it's the same, every student has the same. So if you have students that are sitting next to each other, I always used to like to say when I was on a campus, don't even bother look, trying to look at that screen next to you because they're gonna have a different question than what you have. And it's because of this online computer adaptive functionality. Below, I, this was a question for um, SDE. I wanted to make sure these were the um, branching profiles that were previously in there. And so we can take this offline and maybe uh, add this to the FAQ to make sure that they have the correct branching profiles or test packages. So for those of you that are going to be administering, when you click on administer test, you're going to be presented with a list of different combinations of tests and we will make sure that those are correct and you know which ones uh, to use but this is what it will look like and then we wanted to spend a little bit of time on proctoring options um, prior to uh, when the pandemic started we really only had a couple ways of test administration but now we've expanded that to try to accommodate um, all of the different things where challenges were being faced with technology um, and, and online learning. So of course, we still have the on-campus on-site testing, um, utilizing your own proctors. We've added in something to the right of the screen of your screen that says video chat service. And this is a way that you can still utilize the folks at your school that are certified to be proctors, but you do so through a video chat service. So the student is actually in their home, you're at a different location, but you're monitoring them um, through this functionality. And then we also have in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, the live remote proctoring. This was available prior to um, the pandemic. However, we've just expanded this service. So it's a partner that we've partnered with called Examity, and you can use their live remote staff proctoring for your students. So your part in it would just be creating a voucher that voucher would be emailed to your student with some instructions on how to go to Examity's website and set up uh, your appointment. So that's a, another option that you have. And then uh, the remote proctoring using um, AI or automated is another version of Examity that is um, allowed as well. So if you have any questions on the three that aren't your normal, the video chat, the live remote, and the, the automated, please reach out to Deb or myself and we can walk you through trying to make decisions over that um, if you are unable to utilize the first choice, which would be the on-campus on-site testing. And then there are two options for starting or administering the tests if you are on campus. So the first one would be on-demand, standard no scheduling would be required or pre-planning um, you can just when the student is ready and you're you have that time scheduled um, you can you can uh, set that student down at a computer and start no pre-work is needed the second way is through vouchers where we call it there's pre-registration um, that's some work that you need to do in advance and it's really designed for um, group testing whether that's on or off campus so if you're if you're testing 10 or more students we really recommend that you look into using the voucher system because um, it speeds up and makes test day go smoother. So again, we wanted you to have some takeaways 
uh, as to so you could look back and kind of have this as a cheat sheet, if you will. So if you're doing the standard way, uh, you're working with a student one on one, this walks you through the eight steps. You log on. It gives you the log on. Um, you click on administer test. You click on administer new test session. You choose the branching profile. Remember a couple slides ago, I had a list of the different test packages. So you choose the appropriate one that you want to give, and then you would click on administer test. So you can see it's it's uh, really a series of clicks. It looks like kind of a, a lot of steps, but it, it goes very, very fast. The students then would read the, and accept the privacy policy. And then you would uh, instruct them to read any special instructions that you might include, that your site manager might include in a custom message. They close that box um, and then they're good to go and ready to click on start test. So while it looks like eight kind of complicated steps, it's really not. It goes very quick and it's just a, a few clicks that you take the students through. But if you are working with 10 or more, you would need to do this at every student's device. So that's why if you're doing more than 10, we recommend the voucher route or the pre-registration. So this again is just showing you kind of a visual of what that looks like. The box on the left, administer test. The box, the long box in the middle is going to show you uh, which administer test session. That's where that drop down menu is going to appear and you can pick uh, the combination of tests you'd like to give. And then you click on administer test and the student takes over. So if you are using the voucher or the pre-registration method of administration, we wanted to kind of give you some visuals of what that will look like. So for the student, their experience, you're going to direct them to go to accuplacer.org and they're going to click use voucher on the home page. When they do that, a box will pop up and they are able to enter in their voucher number, their last name, and their date of birth. The system then looks for them. When they click submit, it connects them. They will get a set of instructions that says uh, to stop, that stop sign, um, and just wait for their proctor to approve them. And we'll show you the steps that a proctor would take. So a student is very straightforward. They go to accuplacer.org, they enter in three fields, they hit submit, and they wait. Then, while on the what the proctor is doing during that time, they also go to accuplacer.org, they log in with their proctor credentials, and they click on the dashboard menu, and then click on test center management. A screen appears, their, their dashboard and test center management appears at that time. And what they are going to do then is to start approving these vouchers. So the students are waiting, a, a proctor can be at one machine and they are approving whether that's 10 or 20 or 40, it goes very, very fast and the proctor is doing it from one machine. They're not having to go around to each individual machine. We also wanted you to know about some online tools and options that we have for students that uh, require accommodations. So as I mentioned before, AccuPlacer is untimed. Um, an extended time, you could use that save and resume functionality where you uh, can do the test over a series of days. It doesn't have to be all in one sitting. We also have online something that's called a wizard. It's an icon that's up in the, the upper right-hand corner of the student's toolbar. And if they click on that, it will allow them to change the font size, the font type, the background, foreground color, and Deb will demonstrate this when we go live. Um, and it, they can adjust it to something that really works for their visual impairment. Click on apply and it will go to their entire test session. When they are done, it goes back to the default. And then we also wanted to make sure that you knew that the online version works with screen readers. We've listed out the ones here that we have vetted. Um, we know that there are others um, that are out there screen readers that work, but these are the ones that we've kind of gone through and vetted uh, with, the, with the links. And we really want you to consider the online options first for your students before moving to the paper pencil version. The reason for that is because of that computer adaptive functionality that we mentioned before, so that that student is really getting a test session that is tailored to their skills. We do have then though, as I mentioned earlier, the companion paper pencil formats. We call it the online paper processing system. 
or COPS is the acronym that we have given it. And what it allows you to do is print the, the materials as you need them. So you don't have to order these ahead of time and store them. Rather, you can go straight to uh, login, I should say, and print out standard and large print. There are reader scripts if a student needs a, the test read to them, uh, the answer documents, and you also can bulk print um, if you have uh, many students that you're doing this for. You still will need to, if you have a student that needs the Braille or the audio CDs, um, you would still have to order those. And I believe, Ayaka, that you talked about having a set of these um, at SDE and the schools would just request if they need those. Um, but do you have anything to add to that? Was that a decision? Has that been made yet? Or are you still in discussions about that? We are still in discussion about the, whether we would need to order any, but if there's a need, we'll order it. And we thought that based on our historical data, we didn't see that we would need that many, many of these materials. So we just wanted to um, decide as we go. Perfect. I think the message, folks, then is a check check with SDE, um, no need for you to order yourself. And then by using, if you use this, the online for the standard, the standard of the large print where you don't have to do any ordering, um, you will scan their answer sheet and load it into your AccuPlacer test site. And then that allows you to print uh, a printed ISR or individual score report for that student. So as if they took it on the computer, they would get the same looking report. And then, of course, those scores are included in your data. I want to just pause here and see if there were any questions about test administration, Deb. Um, someone asked if it can be given on iPad. Help me remember, Deb. Um, we have had schools do it, but they do run into a few difficulties. Yeah. There's better better luck with Chromebooks. Better devices. Yeah. 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 So um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, and then it was just asking when will site managers get their credential emails? And I'm guessing you'll fill in that form. And then Ayaka, I, I don't know how long that will take. Um, I, I think we said that it's going to take three days, but I can talk okay. to the person who's okay. processing the form. And then they were asking about those oh excuse me they're asking oh, about the extra cost for remote so i think they're talking about examity or proctor track and so if they were doing that would sde cover that additional cost if they were using virtual proctoring i, I don't believe that was part of the covered cost correct yeah that's a good question kelly but we i don't think we'd be able to cover that cost for you guys this year okay and that's all, Kathy. Very good. So let's move into the resources, and then we will have you uh, do do a demo, Deb. Okay. So the student resources that are available, we just in the last couple of years um, put together something that's called a student portal. The student portal allows students to uh, not have a username or a password, but they can go and retrieve their test results. Um, they also go to the student portal to get information on how to prepare for the exam. So the study web app, um, the highlighter functionality, we've got some other some tutorials to make sure that they they are uh, well aware of how it functions before they actually sit down to take their test for the highlighter, the calculators, and then we still have some that look at that keyboard and mouse. We want to think everybody is prepared and knows that, but uh, we don't want to assume that. So this is what it looks like, and Deb will show you this when we go live, but they go to accuplacer.org. This is the landing page they see, and they click on where the red box is, information for students. When they do that, uh, this next screen appears, and if they click on practice resources, that's where they find the study app, um, some uh, PDF printed versions of some sample questions they can print out. If they click on your AccuPlacer score report, that is how they would um, pull their own ISR, and then if they need to share that or push that to another institution, like if they're transferring, they're able to do that, and that's an official copy that goes to them. Um, test center locator is for higher ed institutions, and I don't anticipate that your schools would need to use that functionality. The study app is free. It's web-based. Um, 
study app makes it sound like you have to go to the web or excuse me the app store to get it and that is not true you simply send your students to this uh, url and it is accessible on computers tablets phones um, this can be used on uh, an ipad the study app um, it can be used alongside screen readers as well this is just a picture of what it looks like so students will be required to create an account so they'll put in their information, their email address, make a password, sign up. Once they get in, then they will choose their practice test. You wanna direct them to the link that says AccuPlacer. And then when they do that, they have the ability to um, either turn on this functionality that's called learn as you go, or go straight into a practice test. And we really recommend that students start with the learn as you go component. That is going to give them every item, every test item that they click on. And these are retired items that used to be on the AccuPlacer test, but now they got overexposed. So now we've moved them into the study app. Um, so when they click on that item, uh, it will show them rationale for why they got it right. So it's kind of like validating that they knew what they were doing with that question or it'll give them rationale for why they got it incorrect. So it's really a, a great study tool. Then after they've done that a few times, run through that for each subject area, then they can click on the practice test. And now it will really simulate what it's gonna feel like to take an actual their actual exam. The highlighter functionality is something that we just recently added within the last half a year as well. Um, a, a lot of research was done and we had a lot of requests um, that students, if they're able to highlight what they're reading, it helps with their the comprehension. Um, so it's really used to emphasize parts of the passage or question that they just want to emphasize. Um, students can choose which color because we wanted to make sure we were um, being sensitive to the different needs, that visual needs that a student might have. But once they turn it on, you can turn it off if it's something that you don't want to use. So you can flip back and forth as you're taking your exam. The highlighter function won't work with the electronic essay, but I don't believe you all are using that portion. Um, and then we created a, a tutorial that explains this so that a student can look at that. Otherwise, we found that when they get in to um, take their exam, they see it up there, but they never really click on it because they're not sure what it is. So we really encourage you to help students know about the, the highlighter function before they sit down to take the test. And then we just wanted to kind of wrap up with making sure you had uh, all the information you have about contacting customer service. You, you definitely can reach out to Deb and I at any time, but sometimes we're both together doing sessions like this and then we're unable to get to you um, immediately. So if that's the case, you call us, we don't get, we're, we're not available. Um, you can always contact our help desk and you will find the contact for them at the bottom of every screen so you don't even have to log in so let's say your login isn't working it will be listed there at the accuplacer.org and when you click on that it will give you three options you can either phone in and talk to someone you can live chat with someone or you can submit a ticket so we wanted again in the takeaway to make sure you had direct access to myself and my colleague uh, Deborah. So at any time, um, reach out to us with any questions you might have. Again, no crazy questions. And I'm gonna stop Deb and see if there are any questions before you go live. Let me check. Uh, come on. Uh, nope, no additional questions. Very then, good. Uh, Taylor, if you, Make it so I can share. Yes, ma'am. I just switched over presentation to you. Look at that. We're <laughs> good. Okay. Can y'all see my screen? Looks like I'm sharing. Yes, okay. ma'am. So, all righty. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the two ways of getting the test. The first would be uh, typically we use that if you have you know, maybe five students. So you would go up to each student's workstation. You would enter in your username and password, your proctor credentials. Then over here on the navigation on the left side, you're gonna click administer test, administer new test. And then it's going to be that drop down that Kathy was talking about. And the only options will be what the state determines that you should be using. So let's just say the student's gonna take the reading only test. 
and then you would click administer test and it's going to have um it's thinking there we go it's going to have this page with lots and lots of words and scroll down and then they'll hit accept and then they'll be on the page where they'll put in uh, their ID numbers, their last name, their birth date. The next screen is going to be a demographic page, and then they'll get into the test. So it's pretty straightforward. But again, with each, um, you're having to log in each student one at a time. So um, if you have a group of students that you're going to test, and like today I was doing a training and they're ultimately going to be testing uh, 200 students over the next um, several weeks. And so they are going to go ahead and create vouchers ahead of time. Vouchers are just a ticket. They are not using any units. It's just, just a way for you to pre-register and pre-assign which tests the student needs so that on test day when they arrive, and after you ID them and collect their cell phones and all of that, you give them their voucher. The student will go to their workstation, put their voucher in. You will be at your computer logged in as a proctor and approving the vouchers. You never have to touch the student's computer. So with vouchers, and again, we have documents we can provide you with all of these steps. Um, over on the navigation, you click on vouchers. And then it's two steps. Step one is student pre-registration. Then there's a template right up here in the blue box, second bullet. And you'll open up that template. <clears throat> and then on the template, there are four columns that are highlighted in orange. These are the only required columns. So in column A, you'll put their student ID number, first name, last name, birth date. So however many students you had, if you had 10, 20, and you can certainly do vouchers with if you only have five students. You'd enter in all of that data. You would save it. Then you would come right back here to this little black cloud. You're going to click on that. You're going to find the file that you created, and it's going to load it there. And then you're going to hit import. And the file will appear down here at the bottom, saying it said fail, but it probably has to do with my file. But then what you'd be able to do, and what I'm going to do, folks, I hit logged in as um, Idaho, but I'm going to log into my regular demo site so I can show you it working correctly. Okay, so here after I had imported that file, I'm going to click on generate vouchers and then I'm going to grab the file that I imported and the students names will appear down here at the bottom. And now I'm going to assign which test they need to take. So if everybody's taking the same test, I can do a select all. And then right above student ID, it says select branching profile. I pick the test that they need to take. And again, the only options would be what is available in Idaho. And you'd hit apply. And the test would get assigned to the student. If they're taking different tests, you can just put a check mark. And so let's say Kyle and Sean we're actually going to take the reading test. So I'm going to give them the reading test. And then the last step is after everybody's test has been assigned, you select all, hit generate voucher, and yes, and the voucher numbers will appear. And then you can, in the upper right, it says print all. You can click print. Each voucher is going to print on a single sheet of paper. And again, they are just the ticket. They're good for 90 days. The expiration date will be printed on that voucher. So if the voucher is never used, you can toss it. Or if they show up on another day, you can use it on the day they arrive. And then here's the beauty of 
test day with vouchers. So the student arrives, you're gonna give them their voucher. They're gonna click use voucher, put their voucher number in. They'll put in their last name. They'll put in their birth date, hit submit. <clears throat> And there's that stop sign. And the stop sign is telling them to wait. And they're waiting for you, the proctor. And you're at your computer, logged in with your proctor credentials. On the navigation on the left, you're on dashboard menu, test center management. The names appear down here at the bottom. And you don't want to wait till all the names are there because the kids will get antsy. So you just start approving. So over here on the right, I can hit approve, okay. And the names are gonna disappear. And then you'll hit refresh up here at the top. More names appear, approve, okay. And you just keep going until everybody's been approved. And Kathy, were there any questions? And then I was going to show them the portal because I just have a few minutes before I need to. Yeah, I, if you can just show them the portal quick, I think that will we can wrap it up. Okay. So again, the portal is just at acuplacer.org. They can click on information for students. Up here at the top is the practice resources. When they click on that, they can go to this blue box and set up an account real quickly. Also, those tutorials Kathy talked about, they're right down here, test taking tutorials. There's a video on the mouse and the keyboard and also one on how to use the calculator and highlighter. And Deb, can you do one more thing? Did you show them the companion, just where it's located, just real briefly? Oh, sure. Let me log back in. So that pencil paper version is right over here on the left on the navigation. It says companion processing. There's several steps involved in it, but then the materials are here. And each of our tests uh, have two forms, a form J and a form K. And then they also have large print and standard print. And so, you would be able to download. They are password protected, so you need to copy the password and then download. And submit. And there are the booklets. And again, these need to be kept locked and secured until utilized on test day. And we can go more involved around companion if that comes up but it is available. Perfect, thank you. That brings us right up to the top of the hour. So again, that was a lot of information folks in, in one uh, short amount of time. So we will um, make sure that we send a few more how-to or step documents um, to uh, IACAS so that she can post those uh, at a place where you're able to get to them. Um, but there, again, reach out with any questions that you might have, and I will just thank you again. And Ayaka, did you want to add anything um, at the end here? Yes, Kathy, there are some questions that came in during the last part of the presentation. Okay. Can you show us how you switch between being a site manager and a proctor reporter if we are doing both? It'll be two different logins. So you would, like I'm logged in as Proctor Reporter here. I would just sign out and then I put in my uh, site manager credential up here and then log in with my site manager credentials. And then I'm logged in as a site manager. So there are two different login credentials. Thank you, Deb. And is there an advantage giving each test separately compared to all at once? I, was that, I have a bias around that, but that's really up to you. It's about a time factor as much as anything. Um, how long? Because none of the tests are timed. And um, 
you know, giving the math where the kids can just focus on the math and maybe giving the reading and writing separately. It's really up to you. Each of them ended about 40 minutes, Kathy, 40, 45 minutes. Yeah, that's that's on average, I would say. Yeah. If you're trying to figure out your timing, you know, there'll be some that'll be less and some that'll be more, but that's a pretty good marker. Thank you, Deb. And thank you everyone for participating and Deb and Kathy, great presentation sure. and really helpful. Okay. Well, thank you all and reach out anytime. Thanks everyone. Bye.